All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is another BXJS coding live stream. And uh, today we're going to be continuing building our uh, JavaScript game, the game that's supposed to teach you JavaScript. And uh, we've had a fair share of problems already. So let's see how we can tackle them today, right? So last time we finished migrating the whole thing uh, from Next.js into Parcel because there was some server side rendering issues. And you know, for the prototype that didn't make a lot of sense. Since that's going to be JavaScript heavy game. Anyway, I don't think server side rendering makes a lot of sense. Anyway, so we switch to parcel, right? And um, we tried to move our uh, evaluation logic into the worker, which worked to some extent. So we actually got the worker ready. And it actually parses the um, code that user inputs using the Babel parser and uses the Babel traverse to actually extract the variable um, value. The problem was that we couldn't figure out how to evaluate the code, right? Because the actual evaluation uh, executed the scope in a scope manner. So we could not actually access the functions or the variables that were defined there. Now, this turned out to be a pretty tricky problem. And one of the people in a Discord chat, uh, Mr. F. Vame, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to call you F. Vame. Fame, you're going to be Fame from now on because even you don't know how to read that username. So I'm going to read it like this. So Mr. Fame over here actually built a Babel plugin that is pretty damn amazing, to be honest. And that allows you to parse the code and then do step by step execution of it, which already looks amazing. There are still some minor issues and caveats here and there. But I feel like probably we're gonna end up using this bit of code. So there is it's still not finished. And there's like a lot of rough edges, as I said, but this looks like an amazing project and um, all the props to uh, Mr. Fame for building the whole thing. Just call me Fabrice. Okay, Fabrice is definitely way better. <laughs> I was just gonna call it. Yeah, that's way better. <laughs> Apologies. Okay, so yes, uh, Fabrice is doing an incredible job here. And I feel like we're going to end up using this once it's ready. But for now, I wanted some very simple and stupid solution that would allow us to at least finish our three test missions that we have here. So variable mission, conditional mission and function mission. And I think I've came up with a solution that could work. But um, we're going to try it today. So basically, the idea is to give it a shot and see if, if it will work as I think it would work. And if not, well, we're going to we're gonna have to come up with something else. Hey, Pollux, welcome to the stream. All right, so um, here's the idea, right? So I was thinking, so we need to evaluate code and we need to somehow make it so that we can actually evaluate keys and extract the new ones, right? What that means is that we already tried evaluating code that was uh, something like, you know, so we could, I, I don't know, we could try the dummy code here and just see if that works maybe even run it right away. So um, if we say we have a test eval, right? So I, I'm just going to make a test eval function over here. So that we can actually reload the page and uh, try to actually see if that works as I think it would work. Uh, how long have I been working on this? I have been working on this. Uh, this is the third live stream. So there's been two live streams up until now. And there's been some problems along the way, quite a lot of them actually. Uh, you can find the videos on the YouTube channel. The link is in the description if you're interested in seeing the previous endeavors, basically. But yeah, it's you know it's not too much along the line, but uh, we we have some progress. Okay, so uh, there's also been a new version of React, so we might as well update to that. And there's you know what the new version of React has this suspense in there finally, so we might as well switch to that and use React suspense because it's kind of awesome. Uh, but let's start by testing my uh, theory about eval and the service worker. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to do npm start, right? So we're going to have the uh, server running. I am going to go back to the browser and come on. So here, here's my idea, right? The idea is that um, error file already exists. Yes, that that's how the cache works. I already had it. Are you going to work or not? Um, meanwhile, there is currently no backend. So we are running on parcel exclusively. And it's basically front end app completely for now. Um, so I like, I, we don't have any users or anything. So we're just trying to implement the whole 
sort of JavaScript evaluation and uh, execution in the context of the browser, right? So to allow users to write the JavaScript and to actually see it executed right away. Okay, cool. So we got that that is working. We now have uh, this stuff. Use parcel index, no cache. Uh, no, I mean, I don't mind the cache. I think it's just the problem with me switching from the Windows side to the Linux side of the same environment. Okay, um, let me think. So we want to test eval this thing. So I'm gonna execute this thing right away. And I'm gonna say, okay, first of all, console log test eval. Let's see that it actually works. Uh, theoretically once, yeah, okay. So we got the refresh, it all works. Now here's the idea. Um, so I'm gonna use the same solution that I think Fabrice initially uh, offered. So we're gonna enumerate the existing keys, object keys uh, self, right? So we're gonna take the keys from the current uh, worker environment and we're gonna save them. So we're gonna say, okay, here are the keys that are currently exist, right? And that seems to be working just fine. Cool. Um, now we're gonna eval the code as we did before right? Uh, but this time around, we're not gonna be evaluating the code that is going to be saying uh, var let const. So it's actually let's say var a equals one. Okay, you know what, let's let's just extract this. So I just want to test if the transformation will work the way that I think it works. So we have we have this original code, let's call it this way or original code. That is gonna be something like um, var a equal one let b equal two and const c equal three, right? So we have var const in that declarations and all of them behave differently actually because they have the different scoping, uh, at least the var, uh, var and let and const two, right? So if we evaluate that and um, new keys and we then enumerate the keys, uh, we're gonna see that console log, yeah, um, new worker keys. So the new worker keys will be exactly the same, right? Because those variables are not actually I think the the a only should be assigned there. No, it's actually not even a okay. So they are not assigned because eval apparently runs them in some in the function scope, I guess, so they don't get um, to the higher sort of self uh, scope of the worker. So my idea was very dumb. Uh, it is to basically run a code modifier that would just do this replace. Um, and we're going to be replacing var slash spacebar. We are globally, uh, we are going to be replacing it with uh, self dot, right? So this is actually all we want. And I think we're just going to be saying const modified code. Uh, yes, so we're going to replace that and we're going to do the same for let and uh, const. And the idea is that uh, because we're going to explicitly say it should assign them to um, self that probably should work. Worker are the browser threads that are not really threads, but the things that are uh, executed in a separate thread from the main thread and are sort of you know, basically, you can offload the heavy work in there, you can uh, read them about the uh, you can read about workers in the wiki if you're interested, but essentially, they behave as a separate threads. Uh, those are not service workers, those are web workers, those are different things. But yes, kind of like service workers, but not service workers, just web workers. <laughs> okay, uh, modified code, let me just make sure that it actually modifies it the way that I, I know how it should work. Um, right, let's see self ABC. And now we actually have them cool. So it actually does what it's supposed to do. But uh, now we need to do what we need to filter them. So we have the key and we should filter it. Um, existing keys includes key and it should not include the key, right? So this should be the new keys. And if we reload that, ABC cool. So we now have um, the keys, which means we can now um, create context, for example, right, and say new keys, map key. So we're going to map them to an object which would have key and then is going to have self key as a value. So there's going to be our variable, right. And then we're going to reduce that. So it's basically going to be the same code that Fabrice offered initially. 
uh, that would not support const a equals yes it would not support but the call cool so like I'm, I'm let me just finish the code i will um, explain you my reasoning here why i think that would basically work okay so we reduce previous uh current to ta -da -da, previous and ta -da -da, current and we start with an empty object and then we should basically be console log context is gonna be um context right so we just lock con no context this is what i wanted i typed a bit okay first of all we don't need that console here uh we don't need that l over here and if we reload that right now we should see cons yeah okay so that works all right so here's the reasoning this modifier why why i think that should work so you are right if user would to write var a equals one uh, B equals two, C equals three. We're basically screwed, right? So this this is gonna break. But the thing is that in our case, uh, the test cases that we give at least at this stage, so our missions that we have, are very straightforward, right? So we know exactly what the code is here. We know that in our case, it's variable change me equals one. So we know that we we can actually write a more stricter uh, regular expression that would replace var change me to self dot change me, right? This is why it's going to work. And this is why for at least the basic three missions that we have described so far, so variables, conditionals and functions, this is going to work straight for, like pretty well, right? Uh, obviously, this code mod should not be done by the worker because this is something very specific to the mission. So it, I think we're going to put that into the mission actually, right? And um, all right, let me think. So before basically before the mission is going to run the code, it's going to actually uh, replace it. So we're going to say, okay, here's our code. Here's the modify. I guess it's better to like have a modify code function on um, apply code mode, right? And it's going to be code and it's going to return code replace yep so basically we're going to have the code mod and in this case it just needs to be var replaced to self and then it will work like um in this case i think it's a super stupid solution but it's the one that is going to work modified code is going to be apply no apply code mods code right and in this case this is going to be modified what no modified code Okay, um, do we need to do that anywhere? No, we actually, this should not be fine declaration. So we actually have to uh, take all of this code and throw it into our eval code function, right? So we get the code, we get the keys. In this case, we actually don't care about the code. We just eval the code, so we're not modifying it. We get the new keys, we construct the context and yeah, I guess we could also const results. We can also re record results. We will have result and context, right? So this should be fine, which means then we apply code mod here and we say Eva, um, no, wait, come on. Eva, ah, okay, I guess it won't get me out of suggestion because uh, because it's a worker, eval code. So we're gonna say eval code and I think we only pass code, right? Yep. Okay, so let's see. So we only pass modified code and that's actually all we have to do in this case. And here we're gonna have a result and context and value is gonna be equal context. Um, what was it? Change me, I think, right? So this is what we want. I think if I did not screw anything up, that should work. And it actually does, but only one time. <laughs> Now that's interesting. Um, why does it only work one time? Okay, <laughs> I am, is it because of the hot reloading? That might be the case. Console log result context. Because you always update, um, am I? Am I always updating the known keys? That might be the, Oh, because they are gonna be there, right? You are no wait, but that's that's. Hmm. So I guess we have to get existing keys only once, right? In the constructor. 
you are right. So because every time is going to be the same variables and they are not going to be existing. That's true. So yep. Yeah, I think I'll just do it in the constructor that makes more sense, I think. Um, okay, that looks good. I think I think that should work. Just try it. So we got in it, we got two, we got three. Okay, now it works. Cool. You were correct. Thank you for the tip. I probably would have figured it out eventually after like two hours of uh, debugging that. <laughs> okay, so it actually works. Uh, you can't have multiple instances of Yeah, I mean, um, that's true as well. But I think it's just, you know, I don't know what kind of things the um, uh, we are using the comlink JS, it might inject some additional keys into environment upon construction. So that's what I'm trying to evade. Uh, I just, you know, I just want to be safe, basically. But I, I think it's not super critical. It's just a slightly nicer way of doing it, basically. In my, I might be overthinking it. Might as well be overthinking it. Okay, so we got that working. Um, now, so we done this, and we don't need to. Okay, I'm gonna leave to do's here for now. Now, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna actually update to the latest React. Uh, first of all, let's commit all of that. Git commit um, fix basic eval in the worker. Um, so yeah, okay, we did that. That is now working. Um, let me think. I need to npm check minus u. We are gonna update. So there's some minor updates to parser and to next. Oh, yeah, by the way, next was I think with the vulnerability. So we are why am I have wait, wait a second, why do I still have next in my dependencies? Why is that a thing? Um, yeah, it should not be there npm rm next, right? That is actually <laughs> I, I probably forgot to remove it completely. All right, there we go. Cool. Um, Right, uh, get uh, do we have anything else that we don't need? We got the okay, that's also required. Okay, cool. I think we're good. Get status, get commit, remove, um, remove unused step dependency. Okay, I'm gonna be not lazy and write the whole thing. Okay, now npm check my uh, check minus u is what we want. And okay, so we're doing this minor updates. And then we got the react update, which is oh, those are actually patches. Yeah, okay. And we got Monaco editor version 020. So here's the question is that there are any breaking changes here? Um, okay, where's my change log? React Monaco. Um, Ooh, okay, you know, what? I'm gonna risk it. So, okay, first of all, let me just update this because I know this will work, right? So if we update the Babel parser, Babel traverse, because those are patch changes, react miners are also backwards compatible. So if we do npm start right now, everything should be working as expected. It's also a bit painful because we don't have any tests. So I don't can actually just run npm test to know that everything is working. <coughs> Apologies. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't care about your source blah, blah, source maps. Um, you know what? I think I need to start my terminator because that might be a bit nicer. Um, also super tiny, so let me just make it slightly bigger. Projects bxjs and we got JS craft. There we go. Okay, uh, might as well probably do all the installation and git commits and everything over here. Okay. So in theory, as I said, since you know, none of those updates were breaking changes, should still be working just fine. And I think it is still working just fine, right? So this is loads, there is no Okay, so this works. Uh, now, I guess we're just committed. Git commits updates. Uh, patch and minor uh, depths, let's just call it this way. And now we are gonna try to update the react Monaco editor and hope that it actually doesn't break anything. And then maybe there's some like minor bug fix or whatever, but uh, not having tests in this case is um, really sucks. <laughs> All right, so in theory, 
that should also work and we should be able to just continue with our stuff the project has gotten quite big so the compilation takes quite a bit of time maybe i should also try to run the node.js on the windows side so that we don't actually have to wait so long for the compilation because i think the vsl even though the overhead is not that big it's still there and it's still a bit annoying but uh, yeah, whatever, that's not critical. Um, so once we did that, what I want to do is I want to use the React suspense for our preview component so that we don't actually have to do all of that stuff on component we receive prop, which is ugly. So now we can just use nice React suspense component. And uh, once we've done with that, I will basically start doing the second conditional mission so that we can actually test if our approach indeed works for more complex cases, right? Okay, so this works fine. Now, um, let me just, um, yep, get, oh, get commit, update React Monaco editor. And uh, I hope I spelled that correct, but you know what? It's not critical right now. Okay, uh, let me think of it. So npm start first of all, uh, luckily we should use the cache so it should not take that long. Please tell me it's not gonna take more than 50 seconds again. Okay, now once it's started, we can actually switch from using this to using the React Suspense, which works in, oh, we actually cannot do that right now because we need, oh boy, I forgot React Suspense demo I already watched that but um, so react suspense relies on a thingy called react a simple app cache or something like this hell if I remember the name of that and I don't think it's actually documented right now um, which is just makes it slightly more annoying um, I think React Suspense simple demo is I remember what I saw from one of the React guys. It was, yeah, it might've been can't see dots. That was quite easy to follow and uh, we need Windows simple. Yes, this simple cache provider, simple cache provider. Exactly, this is what I want. I already opened it once, yep. Okay, so it is not even released yet and I think it's still considered to be not quite production ready, but I tried it, it works fine, so we're gonna use it. And it makes your code like 20 times simpler, right? Okay, so and here's what we have to do. We have to take those things and be like, okay, so we are gonna import, create cache and create resource uh, from this simple cache provider, right? Then we're gonna create our cache, which is gonna cache the resources. We probably should also start splitting the mission into multiple files because this is getting quite messy. Okay, so we create the cache and then we create the resource that is gonna, uh, so it's gonna be wrapped in create resource, it's gonna take the ID and then it's gonna do something. Um, and in our case, this something is actually gonna be this. So it's gonna take the code and it's gonna do this. And uh, it's gonna return context change me, right? So this is actually what we want to have. And that should be a sync because it, I think it's understands, it should understand promises, which means that in the component, we actually no longer need any of this. So we can actually just say that the const preview is now our simple component that takes code as props and eval worker as, uh, yeah, we should probably also, so it should be code and eval worker, right? Because they both should be there. And in this case, we don't need any of this anymore, right? So we actually just want return div. Um, yes, I forgot this. And I think there is now this, yes, my resource read cache foo. And in our case, this is gonna be code eval worker. I, I think I'm doing this correct. So I, I've only played with it once so far. Const results and this is gonna be results and uh, my resources probably should be renamed to code resource. 
Okay, I think that should make it work. So, like, the fact that there is still, uh, whoops, sorry, npm start, that there's still no documentation for that is a bit, oh no, wait, I forgot to wrap the whole thing into the suspense component. So we actually want, um, da -da -da, let me think here, I actually need to say react.suspense. I think this is how you spell it. And then, uh, I think there's also react suspense, you got the fallback, right? And there's also timeout, but we don't really care much about the timeout in this case. So I think that should work. And you know, if that works, then instead of having this super huge component that basically reacted to props, we just have this, which is kind of awesome, <laughs> to be honest. Okay, let's see. So did you compile? Come on. There we go. I think it should work now. And uh, invalid key type. Oh, okay, I guess it wants, okay, so how does it ID, so create a resource ID, uh, ID value. So this is the value that it takes. So it always, I guess the ID should be a string. So it reads by the string, aha. Uh -huh. This is slightly more tricky. I get him. How do we do that? So the, I mean, the cache seems to be the basically key value pairs, right? So the key obviously is going to be code, but how do you pass the worker to that? That is a bit. I mean, one way obviously would be to instantiate the worker. Yeah, that's the thing you can, it seems. Oh boy. I was hoping that would solve all my issues. But God damn it. Okay, wait a second. Uh, where's that simple cache provider thing? Uh, let me have a look. Maybe there's a way to somehow make it like a uh, more complex functions with it. Because I don't want to pass more parameters to it. documentation. You can find react. No, this is not what I want. Uh, little messages, this props. No, this is wait. Oh, this is a react repo actually. Um, okay, then. Um, not using real applications, we only purpose. Okay, so I guess they are basically saying don't use it yet. So I guess, God damn it! I was hoping that would be the solution for everything. <laughs> All right, we are rolling it back. npm. Um, yeah, I guess whatever. We can just wipe node modules and reinstall them because there's too much crap right now. Okay, well, I guess we're rolling with what we have right now, and for now we will have to use the component will receive props. Okay, but fine, you know what, it's okay. We're gonna, we, we, can, we can do that, that is fine. That is nothing too terrible, which means that uh, we are now basically done with the core version of that and we can start doing the conditional missions. So I will create the mission tool here and uh, I am just gonna copy mission one over here and be a lazy guy. So we do need code mode here. We do need the preview component, which would work more or less the same way. And we also need test. So, okay. Uh, so we need the code that user will write, right? So uh, I'm thinking that we actually need the code mode anyways, because in this case we would have to provide additional code for the user, right? Which would modify the um, extension of the, the code basically. So um, let's say, so there's if this, and then there is something um, condition to say result equals one else result equals two, right? Is what we want. So let me think what would be the good uh, da, 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 da. check for condition variable and if it's even return true. Yeah, let's let's go with even um, and um, odd. And if it's odd return false, right? No, not return is what we want. We want to say result set result var variable to true if it's odd 
Two false is what we want, right? So we got this. I'm just gonna leave this as a placeholders. As um, it's basically the idea is that user is supposed to figure it out himself, right? And we got the preview, we got the test. So the test in our case would be, we actually don't want to evaluate it, right? Uh, we want to, or we, we don't want to find the declaration. We actually want to evaluate. So it's going to be a bit trickier. First of all, let's figure out the code mod. So we're going to have this if condition. And what I'm going to do is I am actually going to wrap this into a um, function. We are going to say that this is going to be um, self dot check even odds, right? So we're going to create a new function that takes a value or condition. Condi no, wait, not condition. That's not true. Check for va um, user value variable is what we're going to say. User value equals one, whatever. So it's just going to keep a placeholder here. So user value, right? And then it's going to be this thing. And at the end is going to return, uh, first of all, we have to instantiate uh, results, right? And it's going to be always false. And then we're going to return the result after we're done. I think that should be so basically, we'll wrap it into a function declaration, right? Uh, so we got the init, we got the code. So this is going to apply. And in this case, we got the context. And how do we preview that? I guess we have to have two previews actually, right? So um, for even number, I guess we would have two divs here. And uh, in this case, we're going to have context uh, check even Oh, here's the question. Can I actually pass the function out of web worker? Would that work? We're gonna find out in a second. I don't care about the result for now. Um, check even odds and we're gonna check it with like uh, four const odds and we are gonna, am I confusing even and odds numbers now? Wait a second, even number. Okay, evens are yeah the other way around. I'm always confusing this stuff. <laughs> there we go. So even is four, odd is five. And then we just set state to even odd. And the same goes here, even in its odd in it, right? So we're doing this. Uh, yeah, let's be consistent. Is state even. And then we're gonna wrap it into another div because why not? So we're gonna have this, this or even number for odd number, odd. Right, uh, so we did that, we did that. We don't care about the tests right now. So let's just return false by default. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to home and I'm gonna say that we're gonna import task from mission two, right? Now we can start it and see what exactly breaks because I am sure I screwed something up along the way. Because <laughs> this is how it always happens. Okay, um, unfortunately, we couldn't use React Suspense. Man, I really look forward to that. But it looks like more complex cases do not really work well with the demo library they have, at least for caching. I mean, one way obviously would be to dissect the library and build our own cache. But that sounds like too much work for this. Uh, this is not why we're here, basically, is what I'm saying. Okay. I think cats moved my camera. Yep, they definitely did. Okay. Uh, what? Page unresponsive. Wait for the page. It's still loading. What are you talking about? Okay, I get, you know what? I guess I'm gonna kill you. Yes, close, please. There we go. Are we done yet? Okay, there we go. Uh, now we can test it localhost one, two, three, four. And uh, there is probably some errors over here. I uh, refuse to create worker that is I don't I still don't know where this comes from evil worker, but that, that works, right? Evil worker works fine. Undefined undefined. What is this? Where is this coming from? 
of ones on that. Okay, wait a second. What is okay? I guess I have to change the input, right? True. Uncaught failed to execute post message on what? Unexpected token. Uh, oh, I guess false. Messi okay. Uh, failed to execute post message on message port. User value could not be cloned. What do you mean could not be cloned? Oh, did I did I uh, screwed up the code wrapping? No, this looks fine, right? So I oh I guess ah right because this is not how I do that. I actually uh, okay, so I cannot basically call the function that is instantiated in worker using that using the context passing around. So I guess we need another um, option here to not just the eval code, but to actually execute a function invoke um, invoke, let's call it invoke code, right? So it's going to be code. What do we actually have to pass to it? Um, and we need to invoke it two times, which I guess would add some overhead, but uh, probably fine. Invoke code is going to be code, right? And is going to be params and params is going to be an array. In this case, we're going to call it with four. So this is going to be even and this is going to be odd. Okay, so we're going to have code and params. Oh, yeah, we need a function name. Um, function, let's just call it fn. And in our case, this is going to be what's it called? Check even odd, right? I think that should work. Let's check. Okay, so we got this, we save that we get this. Um, yeah, that's not gonna fly. So we got the code, we got the function name and we got params. So what we are gonna do here is we are gonna result eval code first, right? And we're gonna say self on execute with params results actually gonna wait it and this should be a sync just in case we're gonna have to execute the synchronous function and then we're gonna return result right so i think for this case this should be sufficient although i am not 100 percent sure okay till that's true enter and true um, user value two three um, check like this. So what is it? Does it even execute anything? Here's the question. Console log odds even. Whoops, that is not what I wanted to type. And here's the question. So we got this. We evaluate the code. We tell function expand parameters. That seems correct, right? Okay. Um, we change that delete delete false got five of nothing. I want okay, what if I not make it a sync? Is that because of that? Um, reload that false, right? No, it's still five empty values. That's interesting. Okay, wait a second. Console log self from function. Is that a thing? Does it even like it should be in the scope now, right? Unless I screwed something along the way. False. Okay, so it is in the scope user value let result user value equal one result false result empty. Oh, big. Uh, it is actually up that yeah, so it actually works. Correct, right? There we go. God, I'm an idiot. That is actually works correct. Okay. <laughs> I was like, why is it empty? Well, because I, I put it, oh, damn it. Okay, then. So first of all, let us modify the mission a bit and say, okay, so if it's 
even then we return true if it's odd we return false then it's gonna be less confusing for me and then in this case i'm gonna wipe this so we're gonna say okay here's our value reload that and now we have to why is there so many spaces there so we have to do this i think yeah there we go that looks nicer now what we have to do is we have to do this and true false um okay i guess we have to um adjust the rendering a bit say true false so actually render the strings instead of just trying to output booleans because i think that doesn't really work with react um true true two and for even number false and uh they actually have to swap this sides true number is even number is odd there you go and now we have to adjust the test to actually test it correctly right and for the test cases we also want to uh so we got the evil worker we kill that and this is gonna be I guess we need to write in this case because we want to test on multiple numbers we're basically gonna have a test generate tests right and const generate tests is going to be our function that is gonna output an array of tests for us and the test should basically look like this result invoke uh, modified code so we do what do we get as the tests uh, so we get the test and evil worker okay so first of all no that's not true it's going to be an array of tests so each test should be so this is what we want to do and this is gonna be test code but actually hmm, how do we do that properly will be array of functions that get code and worker but it should be already a function that takes in the predefined value so we should return a new function and this function should get the param and expected result right so this is what we want and then here is going to be param and uh, result is going to be equal expected results and all we have to do is generate tests using the test function we have now and we really should start splitting the code because it is becoming quite hard to read that okay so here's what we're gonna do we are gonna do a um, new array say 10 numbers and uh, we're gonna expand that right and then map it to nothing index so we're just going to map it to index so this is going to be array from zero to one uh to nine right uh to index plus one actually so it's going to be from one to ten and then we're going to say okay map it because we do need we actually need to return that array right so we're going to map this array uh number we're going to map it to test that is going to be number and expected is going to be number number by two and i think so now we should have like a bunch of tests right and text is not defined what text i'm oh i misspell something okay it makes absolute sense i do tend to do things like this let me close this maybe so we have a bit more space and uh, um refuse to create url because the following direct okay we got this we got this where are my tests so okay let us do it this way so we got the tests here and const tests equals generate tests and let's just log that and see what am i screwing up So we got a bunch of functions that take code in the old worker and yeah that looks to be fine so why are they what is happening why are they not rendered correctly let's see where is our test rendering this is this test result test uh what's the test results promise await all task tests map okay so we code it with we call it with this yes 
Okay, first of all, let's let's try it this way. Am I even mapping it correctly? Okay, so the numbers are right. Just making sure I'm sane. Now we call the test function, which returns the new async function that is that looks also fine, right? If eval worker is not there, return false, otherwise return this expected. Okay, so this looks absolutely fine. Now, what are we doing wrong? So we take this test map test I, so we call the user code. Oh, because we call it with the user code. So it actually should wrap the code. Oh, right, there's no modified code. Why is it not complaining? That is interesting. Okay. So like code mods code is what we want to call. Uh, and uh, there are still some like I'm first of all, I'm not sure why this is still a war in the worker errors, but uh, we're going to come back to that later now. So there are 10 tests here, right? And uh, it's empty. It's not even rendering them. Here's the question. Right, okay, let's try to make it like for two, maybe. Now we should have like one and two, right? So there should be only two functions that is correct. Which means that there is something that is going wrong during the execution. So we got the user code and we got the it should still fail even though the user code is like wrong, right? So there's true false that should fail. But it does not uh, for whatever reason. Now let me you know what let me just do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this. Just set it to 300 so that yeah, there you go. Uh, Okay, maybe that's not the best solution, but you know, at least it doesn't stretch us that much for now. Okay, why is it not rendering my tests? Uh, execute tests. Oh, is it because I'm not changing the code? Did I forgot to do that? Oh, yeah, there you go. God, I'm an idiot. Okay, I was doing this all this time. But I just needed to re-trigger the code execution. Okay, then. Um, yeah, so we're going to do 10 tests. And uh, we're gonna be like, okay, so now we got the 10 tests that are failing, right? And uh, if we do this, they are still failing because it should be the other way around, I think. No. Hmm. Now I am confused. But we can actually drop this thing. Is this correctly generated? And tests are going to generate tests. Okay. And it's going to be false. And it's going to be true. And all of them are failing anyway. Now, this is an interesting thing. Okay, so let's see. Console log test run. And we got param. And we got result. And we got expected result, right? So theoretically, now once we change the code, we should be able to see the results in the console. And we should be able to see test run three. Why are you outputting the code there? Am I? Have I, I I've forgotten to remove the console log over here. Okay. So two. Cannot invoke code of undefined. I guess I was too fast. Send two. Let's run one true one. Two false zero. Am I wait a second? Uh oh yeah, because that should have been Boolean thing, right? Um let me think this is what I want to do. Boolean there we go. And I think now the test should actually work. False. True. Now all of them fail. <laughs> Wait a second. False, true, true, false, false, true. Now this is the other way. Is it the other way around?
Okay, I am slightly confused right now. Am I screwing it up or is it just my head now and I'm too tired to think? So this is the division by the, the rest from division by two, right? So the if the number is even, it should be zero. Oh, right. This is why I'm wrong. Okay. By two, and then it should be false, and this should be true, and then we're got all passing. There we go. Okay. I think we made it, and it actually works, and it actually behaves in a way it should behave, right? So close that. Um, can I limit the grid dis the, the grid width somehow? Let me think. So we got this grid template. Can I? Is there like? I know that the um, what do you call it? Oh boy, uh, I guess man, can we do like max with 50%? No, that's not what we want, right? Um, auto, auto. Okay, wait, grid, uh, cell, max with. I know that the Firefox has a really nice grid editor integrated now, but min, max, auto, what is this? Okay. You've misunderstood min max function. It tries to apply the maximum value, then it's possible it applies minimum. Big side, you just need to calculate 20%, applied max width, outline the um, on for auto, max width 60 pixels. Okay, so I guess we could just say max width to the grid item 50%, right? So that should do it. Nope, that is utterly broken. That is not what I want. Hmm. Okay, grid template columns. Let's see how that works. And I think that will be the last thing we do on the stream today. And might as well wrap this up here. Okay, so we got this non uh, track list values repeat three by 200 fit content 40. Auto auto. Okay, so um, how does that actually work? Can we be like fit content 50%? Uh, I was this spell it fit minus content 50 on 10 is what I want to say. That is not quite okay. And then I guess we're going to say like this. There we go. Okay. And then we can maybe make, even make it smaller because we want this one bigger, right? Cool. Uh, that is quite handy. Okay, 40%. Yeah, there you go. Okay, two, and then it's gonna be like false, and this is gonna be true. And it's actually quite amazing to see the tests changing in the real time. This is awesome. <laughs> really digging that. Whoops, that is the wrong button. All right, cool. We actually did that. Um, we implemented the mission too. So let me see. So we don't need that for now. We can close this. We have implemented conditionals on a very basic level, but hey, it works. Git adds, git commits, implement basic conditionals mission. We do that. Uh, and right. So what do we need to do next time? Uh, adds mission selection, right, is one thing that we want because we now have two missions and then we have the function mission. And I think after that, we can start polishing it and then maybe do a do small mission code refactor and split code into multiple files because it's getting messy. And I think, yeah, that that might be the pretty good start. And then once we are done with these three basic missions, we can basically start um, making a better, you know, work with the visuals because right now it's just literally one grid with well some tests, which is not exactly game like and not exactly exciting. So we could turn it into something nicer. I was thinking, you know, like Windows like or window based interface. And maybe some like emails that give you tasks, you know, like Shenzhen IO like, which could be quite fun. And then the previews should also be nicer. So it should be like maybe some logic boards or whatever. We could try to do some nice visualizations here. But uh, yeah, this is basically it for today. So uh, git commits, add some to do's to readme. And we can push that. 
And that's basically it for the stream. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to throw them into the chat right now. If not, then we can just wrap it up here. That was quite productive. Um, all the my crazy ideas worked out just as I thought they would, which is, you know, something that does not happen too frequently. <laughs> but uh, hey, it actually works. So that's kind of cool. All right, doesn't seem like there's any more questions or anything else to discuss. So feel free as usual, feel free to join our Discord server if you have any suggestions or you wanna discuss the projects. It's always fun to see more people there. Thank you for watching and I see you next time. Bye.